It is a nice sunny day here in southwestern Montana. The current temperature is 36 degrees Fahrenheit where I'm standing. That's better than the um, seven degrees below zero weather we had last week. And in January, we also had sub-zero weather. Very difficult to work outside when it's that cold. So without further ado, we'll show you the progress that we have made on the Wallapini since our last posting. We're in the inside of the shop here. So this is what Gabion basket walls look like. They come in kits. And you'll see each panel, they're about, each panel is about two feet wide. You'll see these curly rods or uh, corkscrew rods that connect the panels together. They come with the kit. They come in various sizes and they connect each of the panels together. So we'll show you that. Also, each each of these kits come with really good instructions on how you put these together. So moving into the larger area of the shop, um, we're going to tell you about what we did to construct these. Go ahead. At this point, uh, because of the cold weather, we're building these uh, Gabion uh, cages, baskets, in 20-foot sections, as you can see. And they're 5 foot in height. This uh, one particularly. Yes. And we're also putting bottoms in them because that's what your rock rests on. Uh, we've elected to go ahead and build these in the shop. Uh, spot welding here and everywhere there's a seam. You can see the dividers inside here. These are approximately two foot wide and then a foot inside. So we've spot welded to help support this. Now just a word about spot welding uh, galvanized metal. If you elect to do spot welding on galvanized metal, make sure you have a well-ventilated area. We open these doors up when we're welding. And you also want to wear a mask that filters out the toxins. Um, as I said when we started this channel, I would tell you about lessons learned, 2020 hindsight. Gabion baskets come, if you look at each one of these rods, so a rod that runs perpendicular to the other rod joining it, each of these are tap welded. Well, you can, you can buy these panels where they're twisted wire instead of tap welded. Twisted wire, I think, gives you a little bit more stability, and uh, we didn't know that when we were buying these panels. Every place we put a uh, seam, we're gonna go ahead and use these uh, corkscrew type heavy gauge wires. You can see what they are and you basically screw them in just like this. This is just a short section. Anyway, clear down the seam and they'll go on down. And then uh, that will help support these seams when you start filling your cages with rock because there's gonna be a lot of weight pushing out trying to spread this. So we also use dividers here and here and we'll show you that uh, we go out to the actual Wallapini site. But every place you see a seam that's spot welded, we will be using these uh, corkscrew type wiring to support. That's really important that you do that. We're looking at the bottom of the cages now, and you can see there's a hole here, right here. That is where we're going to set this entire 20 foot length cage over the top of our post that you'll see out there in the Wallapini on site. Okay. So we're looking at the north wall right now of the Wallapini. Um, when the cages are set over the top of these posts, the height will be about five feet, which is what we wanted on the back wall. It is not a bearing wall. And before we put the cages down, as we showed in a prior video, we put the hardware cloth on top of that. You have the canvas filter cloth and then the pea gravel. So before you uh, place your cages, you want to make sure that you've graded this so that it is level and that you tamp this down, this area down very firmly because you want those cages on a very um, stable base. And the 20-foot uh, section is in the shop we showed you when we were building. We 
we'll go ahead and set that over the top of these posts. And our pea gravel will be to grade, and then we'll staple that cage to the back side of these posts for support. And as, um, then we'll start filling it with rock. Like we did this wall. So this was the most difficult wall to build. It is over 50 feet long and this is seven and a half feet tall. We could not find panels that were that tall. So we actually, basically it's like building three separate walls and stacking them on top of each other. So total height, this will be a bearing wall. Um, will be seven and a half feet because it's down inside the cold sink, which is about two and a half feet deep. If you look here, you can see the shadowing, which our calculations were very good. Um, cold sink, you don't care if that's in shadow, but your glow floor, your grow floor, you want to get all the sunshine. So you can see we're at, oh, uh, 20 to four in the afternoon and you can see the sun and, um, We've got a lot of sunshine on the grow floor here. Cold sinks in shadow, that's fine. So let's go um, closer to the wall and we'll explain some things. My doggy say hi. So just a word about, there's a lot of physical labor because you cannot dump a bucket of these rocks in each cage as they have to be placed in there one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so yes, my husband and I handled every one of these rocks. So before you do this, um, I felt like I was getting some carpal tunnel. Get yourself a nice wrist brace, um, wear on your hands, um, because this is a lot of physical labor. And good gloves. I, I, I swear I'll never lift another rock again, not even to skip one across the pond once I'm done with this. But Okay, so now here's a close-up of the cage. Go ahead. All right, these are the uh, corkscrew support wires that were put in here on each joint. Uh, this particular, uh, as my wife said, uh, this these cages were built in three stages. You see some are not welded joints. That's where you definitely want to use these corkscrew wires to support. And we used also the copper wire. I had leftover Romex. We just stripped out when we put these uh, sections of cages together. You don't have to use copper. I mean, you can buy spools of tie wire, of tie wire yourself. If you notice in here, we have these stiffening rods um, that secure the front of the cage to the back. Uh, he's showing you right there what they look like. They come in your kit. But we felt you didn't get enough of them. We're putting them about every one and a half feet. So we ordered we ordered extra. Now they, they are expensive. They can run anywhere from a dollar fifty to two dollars a piece. We ordered hundreds and spent hundreds of dollars. Then we decided we'd make our own. We had some extra panels, pieces, so we started just cutting these this wire itself and um, making our own ties out of those just to save us some money. So you can see uh, light through the wall and that backside. That is where we're going to be placing the pond liner and uh, four inches of insulation and then another layer of our filter cloth, that white canvas, that will help seal that backside before we backfill against it. All right, let's go on the backside and show. So looking down the backside, <laughs> my dogs think I'm playing, the backside of um, the, this Gabion basket wall, uh, you'll see a lot of snow drifts and, you know, this is Montana. As my husband said, You'll see like we stapled each of the cages to these posts all the way down to secure the back side of the cage against this against this side we'll have the pond liner next, then the um, four inches of insulation and then the uh, canvas. That's the hydrostatic barrier and also your moisture barrier before we actually backfill the hole. We were washing every one of these rocks when we first started. We got a couple sections full, very time consuming. Then we realized when we backfill, dirt's gonna go everywhere anyway. So we elected to just build and use the rocks in place. And then once we get the wall finished, 
we'll take a pressure washer and just kind of wash off the front of the wall um, just for more aesthetic reasons anyway that's the progress um, anything else we didn't talk about that touches on this video so uh, the next video I plan on showing is when we put the cage in place it'll be a short video and then um, I'll show you some is when we're actually stacking the rock we do have some rock piles <laughs> Uh, rock that we screened out oh, You'll see a big pile right there ready to go um, So we also are building a short pony wall um, Inside the the cold sink. It'll only be maybe two and a half three feet tall and uh, So lo lots of rock lots of rock handling people um, Sometimes I think I'm too old for this, but Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.